Chapter 32, Alexa Brenner. Fuck Jaden. Fuck Nikki. Bitches, the both of them. While part of me can reason they may have a bit of a point, that it's a better use of time to search for Raylene, I hate the both of them. This isn't searching for Raylene, not properly. This is a waste of my time. Nikki doesn't even seem like she's actually searching for Raylene. There hasn't been one mention of her name. If we really were looking for her, we wouldn't be bothering with searching out and helping people. Our errand this morning has cost us most of the morning. Not one time has one of them mentioned anything about Raylene to the new people. I had to ask myself. No one knew anything, so it was a waste anyway. Nikki returns to the truck. She opens the door. Jaden's at Jerry's and most are already gone already. Someone's going to talk to her and figure out what to do with these guys. But someone should stay behind and help. I'll do it. I volunteer. It's better than continuing on with these people. I'm ready to go at it on my own. Maybe I can if we get this done fast. Pass these people off to someone else and I can go out searching by myself. Actual searching, not this having to run errands bullshit. No, I think Miles can do it. Nikki refuses. Miles sends me a sympathetic look before he gets out of the cab and around to the side to usher the new people inside. They carry with them all their belongings into the lobby of our hotel. All these people lived in squalor conditions in one house. Now they are our problem. For some reason Nikki has made them our problem. The hotel is right there. How much trouble would I get into if I jumped out right now and just went back to bed? Not that I could with a person on either side of me. Miles had been a convenient choice. He was next to the door. We are able to get some slight elbow room now that he's gone though. There are still more people in here than there are seatbelts. Nikki gets back inside. John starts the truck back up and we go out to the right on the main road. Nikki rustles a map. After a quick examination, she's got things figured out. Okay, so I think we need to take a right at the huge intersection down there. No wait. One after. No. Do you know where we're going? John asks. He stops the truck so he can get a better look at the map. Here. She points on the map to a circled space. I can't see what it is from here, but there are a couple buildings within the circle. Maybe they have a lead on Raylene. A bubble of excitement fills in my chest. I try not to be hopeful, leads don't always pan out. The thought that it could very well be another group crosses my mind and deflates the bubble. Okay. John takes the map. Hey, you were right. We do have to go right, but four intersections down. John drives us to wherever we're going. I wonder the whole way if this is another errand or if we're actually going to start searching for Raylene. Flipping back and forth. I hope the latter or I'm going to rage. We drive and turn, drive and turn. We go into a residential area, but it quickly turns into a farm in the middle of town if the green tractor on a pole is any indication. We pull up on the road. The chain link fence has a gate, but it looks chained up. Sunnybrook Farm Museum, a sign indicates. So not a farm, a museum for farms. It looks quiet and abandoned. No one's here. If Darius people were here, there would be more of them. They would have people out patrolling. People would have ambushed our truck by now. So why are we here? With dread, I bet it's not to search for Raylene. What is this place? D'Angelo asks. I want to know too. The answer better be worth it. A farm museum? Jaden asked us to check it out. She thinks there might be important and useful things there. Doesn't think many people would have thought of scavenging from it. Nikki leads the charge out. She hops the fence after making sure the gate really is locked. I reluctantly follow after dirty looks from everyone. A quick search I reason, and then we can finally look for Raylene. The dirt road has splotches of mud I make sure to avoid. They fan out in a rush to explore. A werewolf in Sarah's clothes runs far ahead. Sean and D'Angelo run off in their own directions. Sean to the left and D'Angelo to the buildings ahead on the right. Some other guy checks the door to the first building and announces, it's locked. John and Nikki forge ahead together. I trail a bit behind them. Looking around, just to look busy. Disinterested in why we're here, but not looking for a fight by going back to the truck. There's farm equipment by the hundreds, but I doubt any of it would work. 
Museums aren't known for their working relics. Way to go, Jaden. Holy shit! John exclaims, peering through a window. He pulls away. We have to take some of this back with us. Dread fills me immediately. They're going to turn this into a whole day's job. If not more. Jaden just asked us to scout it out before we look for Raylene. Nikki says. But what if someone else has the same idea as her? We could come back in a few days and it'll all be gone. He argues. We could have people stay here. D'Angelo suggests. No, that's too far away from the hotel. If anything happened, there would be no way of no you were attacked. Nikki tries to shut it down. This place is a gold mine, and you don't leave the mine after you've discovered the vein of gold. There's too much to move over. D'Angelo argues. What if we moved everyone here and around here? We can't move the hospital. John points out. D'Angelo looks around a bit, with a swing of his head. Well then, make a separate community here. This place is too good to give up. Talk to Jaden about it. Nikki gives up with a wave of her hand. She'll know more about how doable it is. Isn't it your call? I quip. The hard glare she sends my way is worth it. She's dealing more with that side of things. She'll be able to tell more realistically if it could be done. Who we can spare? Who's suitable to come out here? What vehicles we can give up? You mean that Jaden's really the one in charge? I dig with a sharp edge. She's handling those things while I try to find Raylene. This isn't looking for Raylene. This is going out on an errand for Jaden. I release my angered thoughts to hurt her, and I know exactly where to poke. What have you done to lead the whole group since this started? Nothing. You've just been out gallivanting around and having a merry old time while you pretend to look for Raylene. I bet you don't even care to find her. Shut up. Nikki stomps over to me, pointing and towering closely over me. I've done more to try to find her than you have. Your little girl is out there being held hostage by your psychotic ex, and all you want to do is stay in your room and mourn your fuckboy. You care more about him than her, or else you'd have been out here from day one. You would have gone with him in the first place. I open my mouth to shout something else hurtful at her, but the pain in my heart freezes my mind. I can't think of anything to say, if my body would even cooperate long enough to say it. Her words echo in my head. I can't help but to think she's right. I should have gone with Darius when he took Raylene. Tears well in my eyes. I turn around so she can't make it worse. Maybe we should split off. D'Angelo suggests. Alexa can go with some people to search for Raylene, and we can finish up here. Nikki nods. She looks around. John, Connor, Sean and Alexa start walking back to the hotel. Search all the buildings between here and there. If you're not finished by supper, note where you are and head to the hotel. D'Angelo, Sarah and I will stay here and ferry some things back to the hotel, then come find you and help finish up if there is time. I don't wait for the others. I'm over the fence and headed back the way we came before anyone else. Hotel is that way. John calls after me. I turn to see him pointing another way. Turning around, I catch up with them to walk back to the hotel. Maybe this is more of a direct route than the roads we took to get here. This feels better, renewing my energy and spirit. On the ground and physically searching for Raylene. We pair off almost naturally. John and Sean and Connor and I John turns into a werewolf as Sean runs after him. They disappear and reappear now and then. Going too fast for a thorough search of each building I snide. We search quickly. Looking through buildings with open doors and broken windows, peering in windows without. I keep quiet as we search until Connor tells me, we'll skip the houses. What? Why? He shrugs and brushes me off. They wouldn't be able to fit too many people in a small house. They have to be in bigger buildings, not houses. That's stupid. Darius could be keeping her in a house with just a few people. Maybe they took up a whole compound of houses to fit everyone. Or maybe it's just him and a couple others. Is this how you usually search? No wonder you haven't found her yet. I grumble. Tears sting in my eyes. Connor turns and walks up to me. We haven't found anything because there isn't anything to find. Darius covered his tracks. He planned to take Raylene. He could be anywhere. He could have flown her across the entire world by now. Be glad we haven't stopped the search altogether. We are looking for her, 
But we also have to be smart about this. If we need to help people out here, or look over somewhere Jaden's asked us to that could help all of us survive, then we'll do it while keeping an eye out for Raylene. Raylene's dead for all we know. Don't delude yourself into thinking we can search forever, when it's very likely that she's already dead. Darius wouldn't kill Raylene, would he? Could he be mad enough at me to do that? He's threatened it before. His words repeat back to me in a menacing taunt. I gave her to you. I can take her away from you.